Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So good to see all of you. I just want to encourage those who are still in the foyer to make their way in. And also for those of you who are joining us online, on Facebook and YouTube, welcome. We are so excited to be together. It's September the 4th already. And uh, some of us are excited about going into the fall and some are like, oh, summer, you can't go away yet. Uh, and so it's so good to be together this morning. And uh, Yes, we are enjoying this beautiful day, and I'm excited to see what God is going to do amongst us. So this morning, we're going to be worshiping in song with our New Wine Worship team. We're going to be sharing in communion together, so we're going to come to the table of the Lord together. Uh, and then um, Josh is going to take us through a bit of an interactive message this morning on what it means to be a people of encounter. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, you'll notice, uh, for those of you in-house, uh, more so you'll notice that the screen behind me is gone. Um, our projector is still, it's, it's still sick. Uh, it's not working effectively. And I just want to encourage us. I know we get so used to having that screen up there, but a few people had shared last week, you know, it's really good not to have the screen because I wasn't distracted. Uh, and so I do want to just say, you know what, don't let it distract you. Enjoy just being together and being amongst one another. But if you really need to see a slide, you can turn your phones on to YouTube or Facebook mute your volume and you can follow along. <laughs> so that is an option for you, that is an option. Technology allows us to do that. So those of you online, you will see the slides um, and so you're, wel you're welcome to enjoy those. So with that, I just wanna have us um, stand. We're getting fuller as people are coming in. Let's stand and take a look around and just say hello. Look for someone maybe that you haven't seen before or seen in a while and just let them know you're so happy uh, that they're here this morning. We're so glad to see one another. Um, so glad to know that we're not walking this journey alone. And uh, especially for those who are new with us, um, welcome, we're so glad that you're here. And, or if you're visiting with us, uh, so good to have you. And for those of you online, um, send us your happiest face, uh, your biggest emoji, or your most excited emoji. Thank you for joining us online as well. Um, so good to see everyone hugging and enjoying seeing one another. It's so good. So good to be seen. So good to be here together. So as we come back together, um, we are actually going to be sharing in communion right away this morning. And so for those of you who are serving communion this morning, if you are serving communion, if you want to head to the tables right now, um, and what we're going to do during this first song of worship, we're going to um, make our way to a communion table on either side. And so there's the bread and the juice for you to collect, and you're going to come back to your seats. Um, and then we're going to do, uh, and we're going to share in communion together. So you are released to head and get communion, and then we're going to come back together. And our worship team is going to lead us in a song while we are getting our communion. So I'll see you back here shortly.
on communion time, I just really felt that we should come together um, and, as we've done before, um, have an opportunity to um, gather together in small groups and confess our sins one to another so that uh, we can pray for one another and be healed. But Shirley then texted me early this morning. She had been out walking, and she had this picture of some things that I felt felt were just important for us to hear as a body, just to give us some idea of where God is leading this morning. And so I'm going to have her share those. Um, and then we're going to go into a time of doing communion together. So here we are. Rule number one, don't text Tracy in the morning. <laughs> um, so I went for a walk this morning, and I, just as I landed on the boardwalk, I had an eagle just fly right over my head. Um, and if anybody who knows me knows I love eagles, and I could not get a capture it, but... Um, and then I kept on going for my walk, and I went by the lighthouse that was down by Silver Fox. And then as I was coming back, um, there was smoldering um, little, it wasn't fire or anything, it was just smoldering smoke um, by the shipyard. And so I had to call the fire 911. And, um, and I was like, okay, God, what is this all about? Because I called 911, and then the fire department called me, and then the police came before the fire department. And so I'm just going to share what I sensed after all of that. Um, so I, I had an experience. I'm not sure if it's just for me, um, but this is what I'm sensing. On my walk this morning, I saw an eagle that was flying over me, then the lighthouse, and then the last of the smoke. 
For me, I sense the eagle was a reminder for us to wait on the Lord to renew our strength. The lighthouse was the light that God will direct us in a storm. And the smoke for me was what, um, for me was bitterness. So it was something smoldering in our life um, that could be hindering us from what God has. The other thing that it would happen is, as I said, I called 911, then the fire department called me, and then the police came. And how many times, it challenged me, how many times do we disregard a person who is calling for help? Because it doesn't seem to be an important, like, it's just smoke. Like, it's not even, it wasn't even a lot of smoke. Um, most people didn't even notice it. Um, but it's smoldering. And so how often do we dismiss that person that is calling for help? Not that the 911s did, because they didn't. But how many times do we just walk by that? Or how many times do we disregard somebody saying, I can help you with something, um, but you don't think it's a big issue. Um, and then how many times do we not heed to the warning? Like how many times does it just a small smoke in our lives and it's like, oh, that's nothing serious and just keep on moving on. So um, it challenged me and it might challenge others. Sherla, thank you for your willingness to share after sharing with me this morning. Um, and it just, you know, it was very interesting, the strength of the Lord, right? He's our strength. He is the light to guide us. But what's getting in the way, right? What's getting in the way? And so James 5.16 reminds us that, therefore, confess your sins one to another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. So what's getting in the way this morning? So the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. And then there's that reminder, like God reminded me this morning, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us or cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so it's so important as we come together to have that opportunity. So I'm going to ask this morning that we would just take, take some time together in groups of three or four, confess our sins, and just simple things. Guys, we don't need to go into a lot of detail. So it could be unforgiveness. It could be bitterness, as Sherla talked about. It could be anger. It could be hiding from God in some way. It could be struggling with an addiction. It could be gossip. It could be going my own way. Um, not putting God at the center. So just something simple. And then after you confess in your group, I'm just going to encourage the group just to say, you are forgiven because we need to hear that because God forgives us when we confess. Then after, pray for each other uh, or have one person pray and then share in communion together. So I'm going to release you to do that. And again, look around and find people maybe that aren't connecting. To, again, keep it to three or four. And we're going to take some, to not, some time to do this right now. So go ahead. If you're online right now at home, I um, just want to encourage you, uh, if you've got a group of people with you at home, to gather together to share in communion in that way. And if you're just by yourself, just to online, if you feel comfortable to share um, with each other online as well and interact. So this might mean moving around a little bit. But guys, keep those groups small. Keep them to three or four. Awesome. That's good. And then Isaac, go ahead with the music. You should have music, Isaac, to share. That's great. All right.
so beautiful to be able to be together in that way and, and share with one another. Um, and so uh, we're going to have some people going up and down the aisles to collect the cups. Um, and we're just going to head into worship and just thank the Lord for, yeah, for community, for his forgiveness, for mm. being able to share in this together and uh, just worship him and give back to him. Um, and just, God, I'm so thankful this morning. So thankful for the cross. So thankful for how you meet us, God, wherever we're at and how much you love us and how you long to pour out your love upon us. And so this morning, I just want to encourage you as we go into worship, um, after worship, when Josh comes up to share, we are going to do more of an interactive message time. And so we've been talking about being a people of encounter. We've been talking about what it means to live with God at the center. And so if you've had questions, even brewing after those messages, we're going to have a time where you can ask those questions. Um, and so um, if you've got something that's even in your hearts right now, I just want to encourage you, you can write those things down and we're going to have a chance to interact together after worship. So just want to let you know about that. Um, and if you were coming in a little bit later, um, I just want to let you know we don't have a screen this morning, but that's okay. We can just focus on the Lord and focus on what He is doing in our hearts. And so we look forward to what He wants to share with us in worship. So let's, let's worship together. Thank you. Feel free to stand, move around as we enter into His presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your body and for your blood, for the remission of our sins. Thank you for our body that we can come together and confess our sins to one another. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that we can boldly approach your throne. Father, we choose to run after you this morning. choose to run after your presence, we choose to run after an encounter with you. Thank you, Jesus. There's no one like you.
forgiveness flows from your veins your kindness shown in all your ways we sing God is so
Eyes of redemption on his hands Bow down before him Come let us adore the great I am Join in the song that never ends Holy, holy, holy
He shall reign, He shall reign forever and ever, amen. He shall reign, He shall reign forever and ever, amen. Holy, holy, holy. Christ the saving one oh praise his name forever and ever amen oh praise his name forever and ever amen oh praise his name Who came here to praise the Lord today? Jesus. He's the reason I'm here. I'm not here to entertain anybody. Neither are the rest of these people. We're here for you, Jesus. We're here for you alone. We bring our sacrifice of praise to you this morning. Not because we feel like it or because we wanted to come to some feel-good group or get a SEC touch. We came to get a Jesus touch this morning. We need a touch from you this morning, Lord. We came here to worship you. So I'll join with the angels and sing holy, yes. holy, holy. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Yes. He's so good, people. He's so good. Let us not forget. We just took communion in remembrance of what he's done. So Father, we won't forget. We won't forget what a good, good father you are. You redeem my story. And I'll never be the same. And our prayer is that if you came in here this morning, that you won't leave here the same. Jesus, we want to meet with you. We're here for you, Lord. We're here to exalt your name. Let's sing worthy, 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 holy, 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 worthy, 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 holy, holy, holy. Just begin to offer up your own song. We've each been given a song. It doesn't matter if you can sing. God's placed a song in your heart. Open your mouth, and I promise you, he will meet you. And it'll be a sweet, sweet incense to his nose. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. You're worthy. You're worthy of my praise. Story, and I'll never be the same. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, worthy. For from Him and through Him.
both from Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be the honor and power and glory. Last time, born from Him. Jesus, you're the center, and 
everything revolves around you Jesus you Jesus be the center of my life Jesus be the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Cause nothing on this world will do. Cause Jesus, you're the center. And everything revolves around you, Jesus, you, nothing else matters, and nothing in this world will do, cause Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you, Jesus, you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens. Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, Jesus be the center of your church, Jesus be the center of your church. Cause every knee will bow And every tongue shall confess you Jesus 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 Jesus, Jesus, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you, yes, it's all about you, Jesus, 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 Jesus.
together in worshiping and there's like Heather was saying there's nothing no one like Jesus and I'm just reminded how at times we see the struggles in our lives and we see the things that are hard as these mountains these big walls in front of us yet God reminds us that he is so much bigger and I was, I was meditating on Psalm 48 this morning, and God reminded, of this of, reminded me of it as we were worshiping this uh, in this song. And at the very beginning, it said, God majestic, praise abounds in our God city, his sacred mountain, breathtaking in its heights, earth's joy. And then I was reminded about how God's grace covers all of our little mountains. <laughs> because his is so much bigger and so we can take those things that look and seem so big and we can just lay them in front of God's majestic mountain and know that his grace and his mercy is so much more and gives us what we need and gives us a view a better view a, a brighter view of who he is and our futures in him and just like Shirley reminded us of this morning, that lighthouse, like he's the light in our storms. He's the strength that we need when life is difficult. And we can come under his wings and know that he is carrying us. He is so good. And then later in Psalm 48, it says, uh, it says, we pondered your love and action, God, waiting in your temple. Your name, God, evokes a train of hallelujahs wherever it is spoken near and far. Your arms are heaped with goodness, goodness in action. So be glad, Zion Mountain. Dance, Judah's daughters. He does what he said he would do. So whatever you're carrying today, he does what he says he would do. And he will meet you there. And if you are experiencing even just joy today, he's meeting you in your joy. He's meeting you in your sadness. He's meeting you in your grief. He's meeting you wherever you're at. And he is so much more. And we can exchange the stuff that is weighing us down and leave it at his feet and let him carry us. Then it says, circle Zion, take her measure, count her fortress peaks. Gaze long at her sloping bulwark, climb her citadel heights. Then you can tell the next generation, detail by detail, the story of God, our God forever, who guides us to the end of time. Isn't he good? Amen. He's so good. So good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Ah, so good. That generation, you know, tell the next generation, detail by detail, the story of God, our God forever who guides us to the end of time and so this morning I just wanted to share some highlights from um, youth camp and then I actually wanted a chance to pray for our kids because they're going to school and they're coming in right now so come on in guys and, and Pastor Freddie will lead you you guys can come to the front that's awesome um, but before we do that before we take some opportunity to pray for our kids as they're heading back to school um, I just wanted to share a few highlights from camp and uh, Pastor Colby, uh, our youth pastor, I 
I highly encourage him to take a day off, <laughs> take a Sunday off. He's been very busy through August when I was away and busy with camp, so he's not here today. Um, and so if you had a chance to read the email, youth camp was mind-blowing. <laughs> it was the word that he used. It was amazing. Um, and just a few highlights he, he has shared, if you've read the email, but I'll share with you if you haven't. Um, the weekend was immersed in the Holy Spirit. There were salvations. There was holy repentance. 11 water baptisms, and so just a congratulations to five from our house. Yes, amen. We can celebrate that. Um, five from our, our house, so Jason and Clara Arsenault were baptized. That was a father and daughter that were baptized together. Jack Affleck, Noah Clow, and Naomi McClellan. So let's just, yes, celebrate with them. Uh, that's a big step, and we're so proud um, and excited for them as they take this journey. Many teens, all, teens also received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues that weekend as well. So, you know, being able to bring three youth groups together. So there were 90, there were 90 kids um, and uh, 40 volunteers, and so 130 at the camp. Um, and so it was just an incredible time. And I do believe that we are seeing a move of God in this generation. Um, and it's a privilege. It's a privilege to participate deeply in the teens' lives as they seek to come together and seek Jesus to see a fundamental transformation in this generation. So I'm so excited to see what God is going to do as Colby takes steps to steward what God is doing in the youth. And there is conversations among these youth pastors, the three that got together to do the camp, on how do they continue to do this together because of the relationships that have been formed. And so we, we are the church. Um, we as people are the church. And so coming alongside each other and supporting each other is the mission on the way forward. So them uniting as three different churches coming together to walk alongside and encourage one another, I believe is so key in this season. And um, we know that the religious spirit will try and divide us. So as we choose to step out in an opposite spirit with humility, serving one another, and following the lead of the Holy Spirit, then we're going to see freedom. We're going to see freedom. And so it's letting go of control and not seeking the approval of men or stroking our own egos, but it's putting Jesus at the center. And I really believe that's what we are stepping into with our youth, and so I'm so excited for them as they lead the way in that area. Um, I also want to call up our summer interns as well. So Faith and Jasmine, they had their last day with us on Monday. Um, and I'm so proud of these two. Uh, it's been an amazing, yes. <laughs> it's an, been an amazing summer. Um, and the two of them are serving this morning. They are both, we've got, uh, Jasmine's on, I think, lights this morning. And Faith is in Kids Church working with our grades two to six. And so I just love their hearts, their hearts to serve, to come alongside, uh, and to put their hands into anything <laughs> that was asked of them. So they were very flexible. So they were behind, of course, our barbecue. Uh, they did a lot of different uh, maintenance around the facility as well as doing our VBS and lots of extra little things along the way. And I just, I've loved seeing their hearts uh, as they've um, had a chance to dig into some deep deeper conversations, and it was really neat on Monday because we had done the Emotionally Healthy Spirituality course together, um, and just the practices that they're starting to be introduced to about an intentional life with Jesus, and so they're just really realizing at this young age how important it is to be intentional, and I think that is so huge. So uh, I just so appreciate watching you guys grow um, and just seeing just new life in you in different ways. I'm excited for what God is doing in your hearts and what that will mean going forward. And so I just want to encourage us as a church, if you get a chance to interact with them after, uh, just to encourage them and thank them. Um, so let's give them a round of applause. Yes. That is awesome. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you so much. So um, let's talk about going back to school. So we've got our kids up here. Um, and so I just wanted to take a time to pray for our kids, um, no matter what grade you're in. <laughs> so if I can ask all of our kids going back to school to either stand or make your way to the front. So if there's any other kids in the audience, any, again, grades, kindergarten, all the way up to grade 12. Um, if you are heading back to school, please make your way. And then um, I just want to ask if, there are any, if there's any teachers or anyone who works in the school system, if you could stand, uh, because we'd like to also pray for you. 
Um, and then what I'd like to do is encourage us as a body, um, just to, you're gonna, I'm going to ask you to get up and move around. So I'd like to surround um, anyone that's standing in the audience and then have a few of you come and surround the kids um, as well. So let's, let's, let's not sit and be uncomfortable. Let's stand and make our way. Um, and we can just, I just want to surround our kids. I think this is really an important act. I want them to know that they're loved, that they're seen. And so, yes, <laughs> just find a space. Uh, the teachers are there. We'll help you, guide you guys. Just make your ways. We'll just, we just want to surround them. So just come, surround them. Be a part of recognizing that we are a family, that we don't, that we don't do this alone. Yeah. So kids, I'm just, I'm so excited um, that we can have you guys come and participate in this. Um, we want you to know that you are loved, and I know that you guys face all sorts of different things when it comes to school, and so we want to surround you as your church family. We want you to know that you are loved. We want you to know that you are seen. We want you to know that we value you, and are, we want to encourage you. We want to encourage you in your faith walk as you go to school and as you face different pressures uh, in the environment at school. We want you to know that, um, that you're really important. And we love you. And so those of you who also work in the school system, yeah, we want to surround you and want you to know uh, that we know that it's challenging and you carry a light. And so we want to surround you with that. So with that, let us, let's pray together. So you know what, kids, if you guys are comfortable, do you guys want to hold hands? Would that be okay? Would that be okay? Yeah, hold hands. Yeah. There you go. You want to hold hands? Yeah, we won't make you, but it'd be great. If you, can, if you can connect that way. <laughs> and so those of you who are surrounding them, yeah, why don't you guys hold hands as a, yes, yes, unity, surrounding them, saying that, you know what, we are together as a family. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. So good. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor Freddie. He helps you. Makes things, makes things come together. <laughs> so good. All right. So in unity, yes. So just want to take a look around. Just this is family. This is like the generations. We've got the little ones all the way up to those of us with grayer hair and, and older. And so we just, we're here as a family, all the ages together. And it's so important to know that we don't walk this alone, that you guys don't walk this alone. None of us do. And so we're going to pray together to our Father God um, and just bless you guys as you head into your school year. So, Father, we just thank you. Thank you that we can come together like a family, that we are a family, not just like a family. We are a family. We are a family in Jesus, Father, and you are our Father. And we are so thankful, God, that we don't walk this journey alone. And each of these little ones little up to big, <laughs> up to high school, Father. Each one of them, God, they don't walk the journey uh, of life alone, Father. And so I just want to pray that, Jesus, that you would be so close to each one of them, Father, as they head into the classroom or head into the homeschool classroom, God, um, that your presence would go with them. And when they face difficult things, Jesus, I would ask that you would just prick their little hearts to remind, to remind them that they can ask you for help. They can say, Jesus, I need help. Whatever they're facing, they can ask Jesus to come, and he is going to come, and he will help them. Whatever it is, Father, you are all-knowing, and you love each one of them so much. You have said, do not, you know, do not push the little children away. Draw them. I want to know them. I want to be close to them. So I just pray that each one of you would know his presence so closely as you head into this into the school year and father i thank you for them and god i thank you for the teachers for those who work in the school systems god and the support roles all the different roles that are represented here and beyond father we just want to pray lord for each person that carries faith lord in the school system as well and we just pray that god that you would give them the strength that they need father to stand on the things that are important to your heart God, that you would give them, Lord, the wisdom uh, to know 
uh, how to walk out what you've put before them, Father. And I pray, God, that you would just give them um, eyes to see how you see, Father, that you would give them hope in that, because sometimes things can look really difficult, but when we look to you, Father, you bring light and you bring hope. And so I just pray that you would give that to them, Father. You would shower them with that. And then also, Father, I want to pray for parents as well. Lord, each parent that is represented here, Father, uh, that is guiding their children. Um, Lord, it isn't the schools that are responsible for guiding our children spiritually, Lord. It's the parents. And so, Father, I just pray, know with the many pressures and the many things that parents face, God, I pray that you would meet each parent here, Father, and that you would Help them know what to let go of in the school year and what to hang on to, Father, and how to create a home and a space that honors you so that their children can know and understand further what it means to live in the kingdom of God and to walk this out. And Father, I pray that you'd also bring people alongside each parent to encourage them, Father, to give them um, to, uh, like to spend time in prayer with them, to help them know that they're not walking this alone. God, I know that it, there's so many new things that parents are facing, but God, they're not new to you and they're not a surprise to you. And so we can come to you, we can call upon you for the wisdom that we need in moments when we are uncertain. And so Father, I pray that you'd meet each parent in deep and personal ways and give them what they need as they head into this season, the school season. So I just thank you, Father, that we can come to you, that we can ask you to guide us, that we can put you at the center and say, Father, we know that you're going to guide us and lead us and show us what it is that we need. And so thank you, Father. Thank you for each person, child represented here. And we thank you, Father, that we are a family and that we don't do this alone. We do it together. In Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Give a high five. Give a high five <laughs> to these ones. Yes, encourage them. It's so good. They give great high fives. That is awesome. Thank you, Pastor Freddie, for bringing out the kids. That is awesome. It's so good to be journeying together like this and being a part of this together. This is part of being a family. This is part of recognizing the different generations and uh, being part of um, just doing, doing, doing the different parts of life. Like back to school is a big deal. <laughs> I remember that as a kid. And so all families with children remember how much of, and know how much of a big deal it is to prepare and get ready for back to school and the different pressures and things that you're going to be navigating. And so we just want to continue to hold you in prayer and just know um, parents and kids, just know when you come to church on a Sunday, you can always, you know, seek prayer and seek uh, encouragement. That's part of what we do as a family. And so I have one last just quick reminder. Uh, I had shared last week um, that, well, we talked about how important it is to be in life groups, to be in small groups, to do the spiritual life in small groups of people because on a Sunday morning, we love being together as a big group but we can only go so far. There's only so much opportunity to actually know one another and actually see each other deeply. And so we're going to be um, sharing with you next Sunday after church uh, from 12.15 to 1.15 um, what we're wanting to, what, what we want life groups to look like. And so it's, it's an opportunity for those who are interested in leading a life group or, you know what, if you're just curious, you're not sure if you want to lead a life group, but you want to see what's happening and what's going on, because we're going to need life group leaders, and we're going to need hosts for homes, and even those who maybe want to come alongside and, and be an apprentice to a leader. So if you're just curious and you want to take this step, we want to encourage you next Sunday after church, there's going to be a light snack time, and we're going to share, Darren, Stretch, and myself, we're going to share um, where we're headed when it comes to life groups and what's going to be needed. So that is next Sunday. So with that, I'm going to call Josh up. And so as I shared, we're going to have a bit of an interactive morning, um, and we're going to do some Q&A, but I think John, Josh probably has some opening words <laughs> before we do that. <laughs> Put it over here. Um, and so I know that we're so used to in church, traditionally, to just sit and to receive and to take in information. And so this is a little different uh, to have some interaction, but it's so important that we have space to engage and interact 
and to hear questions from one another and to be able to talk through those things. And not mm -hmm. saying that, um, that Josh and myself have all, the, have all the answers either, but it's an opportunity for dialogue and to begin to uh, talk these things through and walk these things through. And to hopefully it encourages you to continue to, even amongst yourselves, talk things through and, and walk through some questions. And yeah, one so. of my friends says he won't call it question and answer time. It's question and response time, because <laughs> you never know if you'll actually have an answer or not. That's right. So that's probably sometimes, wise. sometimes questions lead to more questions. Yeah, yeah, that's and right. That's, that's part <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah. So Josh, I'll let you get started. And yeah. I well, will. well, just a, a word about that is, um, how many of you ever been to school? <laughs> right. We're just talking about this, uh, and you know, a a significant. How many of you are teachers or have been teachers? Um, a significant part of learning is asking questions and dialoguing with the people that are, you know, quote unquote, that should be a little bit further along on the, you know, if it's math, the teacher is teaching it because ostensibly the teacher knows math better than the child does. And so the child might have questions and some of the best teachers create space for uh, asking questions. And I know this year uh, we've been on this um, this track of uh, who are we as a people and what does it mean to become something? What is, what is the, the, you know, the, the broader topic of the healing of our identities? Um, and you know, this is, this, the, the term identity, what's our identity, has become such a cultural catchphrase um, in, in our modern age. Not even in just churches, but in churches for sure, but just in general, we're obsessed with our identities. And, you know, our, our response to being obsessed with our identities is we say, get rid of the ego because your identity is not the center. Jesus is the center, right? And so we've talked about those kind of things. But, but I just thought Tracy had brought up the idea of doing a Q&A thing in early August, but then she went on this pesky little thing called a vacation. And then it seemed like about half the church got COVID um, because probably because of a barbecue that the interns planned, but we won't blame the interns. <laughs> And so it just didn't happen, right? And so I, I texted Tracy late last night and I said, you know, I had some thoughts about what to share, but I thought, what if we revisit that idea of doing a Q&A? So anyway, that's kind of how we got here um, because I, when I recognize we've, we've talked through a lot of concepts, but it can seem like, you know, when you're throwing out a new concept almost every week, um, it can be overwhelming to try and understand something. And so maybe there's questions. So anyway, that's the thought. That's great, and I think I have a question to get us started. Okay. If you're ready to go. I'm ready to go. Okay, <laughs> Lord help me. <laughs> and then we'll just kind of go from there and kind of see where it goes. Yeah, so, I'll let you figure out the way of people asking. So yes. I don't have to deal with that. I just have to <laughs> respond. So we'll start with the first question, and then basically I think what we'll do Maybe is, can I think at the monitors. Can, some, can we turn the monitors down if that's what it is? Because I'm, I'm getting, we're getting a much of feedback. Yes, that's yes. good. I would say if you're interested in asking a question after, you'll put up your hand and we'll come to you with the mic is probably yeah. what okay. we'll do. So, but I may change my mind, but we'll see how that okay. goes. That's up to you. So the, the first question, Josh, is I'm wondering if you can, I know we had this conversation this week actually, which made me think of the question. Um, when we use the word encounter, there's many different ways that people would choose to define that. And so I was wondering if you could even just talk a little bit about the, what we mean by encounter. Yeah, for sure. But um, that's a, it's a great question um, because there, it, it runs the gamut when we use that language, right, in our, in our churches, um, especially in charismatic circles. I remember chatting with um, the local Anglican priest here, who's a good friend of mine, Colin, and we were talking about the term encounter, and I was, I was saying, well, what would, what would in, if you were in a group in your, in your church, the Anglican church, and someone was, to, like, if someone said, um, I had an encounter, what would you think? And um, he said, well, I would think like you ran into someone in the city, right? But in, in our church, if someone says to me, I had an encounter, I would think, oh, they must have met Jesus, yeah. right? Like, they're, like we have particular terms that we use to convey something. And so in our culture, it runs a gamut, but it's not even the same from one church to the next. And so we have to define what we mean by these things. And... Um, 
when we say encounter, we don't necessarily mean, um, I mean, we can mean a heavenly visitation where Jesus shows up in the room and you have a vision and um, your whole life is totally transformed. We can mean that with encounter. But when we say that we're a people of encounter, what we say is that we seek to live a rhythm and a lifestyle where we are daily creating space and room for Jesus's presence to come to us. And we believe that as we live that out, the transformative nature of Jesus, when his life is made manifest in our life, things happen and our lives change. And that doesn't happen because there's a one-time fix-all moment. It happens because there's a lifestyle of many moments. And moment, one moment, and Tracy and I were talking about this this week, where if you think of your life, your life really is a series of encounters with Jesus. And every significant moment with Jesus, um, each one of you had a moment that drew you into the kingdom. Each one of you had a moment that drew you here, whether that was simply walking in and feeling a fondness for the people. That's Jesus shedding his life abroad within you. That's like, why do people choose churches? It's like, sometimes people think, well, we, we're, and this can happen. We're so um, program-led. You know, does that church have good programs? This church have good programs? Um, but most of the time, people walk in and, well, I like this place. Well, why do you like this place? Well, because I like this place. There's, you know, there's, there's just something that happens and something tra- that transpires that's almost um, indefinable. There's, there, obviously, there's more to it than that, but, that, but there is that moment. And so, in any case, there, there is, we all have moments with Jesus, big and small, and the bigger moments tend to create life values for us. And so these, these, these bigger moments start to shape our core values about who we are, and then they shape our goals in life, and then they shape the way we practice those goals, and they shape the outcome and the people that we're around, the environment that we put ourselves in. How many of you have, have ever had a moment with Jesus, and then within a month or two, you realized you kind of had to change some of the friends that you were around? Because a moment can shift your environment. And so your whole life is a series of encounters, and you, you think about how... You know, if you removed one encounter from your life, if you removed one significant moment from your life, the rest of them kind of fall apart. You become a very different person. And, and we don't necessarily think about it like that because when, when we've talked about this, we think about identity as kind of a, a structural thing that stands outside of us that, in a way that we think about ourselves, but your identity is directly tied to your history, which is directly tied into this series of encounters you've had over your life. And so when, we, when we're using the term encounter, we're, we're, we're both having a broad definition to that and a very narrow, specific definition to that. Um, and so we're, we, we want to say that we're a people of encounter because we want to talk about the fact that we have lives marked by the presence of Jesus and that every day we endeavor to, that our life would be marked even more by the presence of Jesus. And so we talk about the, the disciplines of the spiritual life. We do things like running emotionally healthy uh, discipleship courses, uh, you know, pressing into the fall and relaunching the life groups. And all these things are geared towards encountering his presence, both individually and corporately, and, and getting us stuck outside of placing ourselves at the center and placing him at the center. So is that helpful? Yeah, and I, I would say, Josh, too, like the, the purpose of encountering daily because sometimes the question can be like, why daily? Like, life is busy enough. Yeah. But daily, like you just said, removes us from the center and reminds us to put Jesus at the center. Yeah. And that's why a daily encounter yeah. is so important. I, I remember uh, one time, um, the, my watch is a little bit fast, so you guys may benefit <laughs> from that. <laughs> and the little twisty dial fell off of it, so I need to get it fixed. I can't change it. Um, so, <laughs> I remember at one, one point having this moment with the Lord where it was like he showed me that he had, I had met his presence here, right, in this particular time, and that he had planned to meet me here, and that in the middle I'm crying out about how much he's forsaken me, right? But it, when you when you pull the curtain back or you pull the viewpoint the viewfinder back, you know if you ever used a lens that focuses, um, well every camera does today. But uh, if you or that that zooms in, when you zoom out, you see a bigger picture, right? 
And we get so stuck in the moment here, in the middle, saying, my God, why have you forsaken me? Right? And thinking that that's what Jesus meant, that God had forsaken him on the cross. Uh, and instead, when we see the whole thing, we go, well, actually, he has this plan to meet me here and this plan to meet me here, and all I need to do is hang on to the next one. And then all I need to do is hang on to the next one. And in the midst of all of that, he's forging and forming things within me. And, and I remember this, just this distinct moment where he said, I've planned each and every encounter individually for you and for me. And I've been seeking for you ever since you were born, and I'll never stop looking for you. And it was like, oh my goodness, it gives me such a different perspective on the daily grind of the spiritual life, right? He says, well, my prayer life wasn't that good, it was lower, I didn't feel his presence, blah, blah, blah. You know, we've all had those inner conversations. And, and he's going, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm meeting you here and I'm meeting you here, and in between that, we're learning to walk this out together. And so it, it, an encounter doesn't have to be a high point, it can be a low point. So one of the things that, one of the misconceptions about the nature of a spiritual encounter um, is that mountaintops do not produce, mountaintops in the Lord do not produce great clarity. They produce great reordering. And, and so we think, oh, if I just could make it to the top of the mountain and meet him, I'd understand there so I'd know where to go. No, no, no. It changes everything. Right? Like, if, even if you think about climbing a mountain, it's very different climbing down the mountain than it is climbing up. So when you get there, everything changes and you have to reorder. It's not that everything becomes clear, it's that everything changes. And now my life may look like a mess because I'm realizing all the things that need to change. And, so we, and that's, again, that's why we need each other to walk things out. And so mountaintop experiences aren't necessarily something that you want to go, give me the next mountaintop experience. Is you can ask for that. <laughs> and, and, you know, in a, in a way I'd encourage you to ask for that. But in a way, I'm shouldn't have told you what will happen because of it. <laughs> I, I, I had this dream a number of years ago where um, I, was, I was pushing this like senior level prophetic person. I don't know who it was. I just knew they were this senior level prophet type. And I was pushing them up onto a stage and I knew they were going to prophesy over a great crowd that was in front of them. And I was so happy to be behind them pushing them up the stage because they couldn't see me. Right, And I was thinking to myself in the dream, oh God, don't make them prophesy over me. Please don't make them prophesy over me. I know what comes with great prophecies. There's great trials. Please, <laughs> please don't let them prophesy over me. Let them prophesy over everybody else, just not me. And Because I understand. I, I've repented from that mindset, and I think I'm okay with it now. Like I could take the next great prophecy, but I also know the great cost that comes with a great pro with a great mountaintop experience. Yeah, when we were when we were talking, I was mentioning that my experience too on the mountaintop has been. Then suddenly I feel very disordered. Like it's like yeah. how, do, where, how do I take this next step? I don't sometimes don't know what to do, where to go, and so it does come with great testing after that. Yeah, to, to for sure. Understand. That's scripture, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So rejoice in fiery trials, my brothers. Like who says that? And I have to say, after going through hard things, I can look back and say, I see that it's worth yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but at the same time, it's like, do I want to go there? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. but the little encounters, like the, not the little, but the encounters daily, are what prepare us. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. The, That's right. The bigger encounters; those are really important yeah. that we daily forge that time. That's right. So questions. Who okay. I recognize that man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I am um, I've been reflecting a lot on the church in the last 13 months. And um, one of the things that you and and Tracy and Colby have been talking about is um, being conformed to the image of Jesus mm -hmm. and, and our identity. Um, great, great teachers. Um, one of the things that I was reflecting on this week is that um, a lot of people in the world really look forward to Friday night and Saturday night when they can get away from their world and drink and and, right. you know, relax. And then I was thinking about church <laughs> and how a lot of people just can't wait to get finish their work week so that they can come to church and get their fix. 
and I got thinking about how um, we compare getting our Sunday morning fix uh, to our fix as an awful lot like the world gets their Friday night two hour fix or sure. six hour fix, whatever it is. And um, I know that Christianity is so much more than a two hour fix and so much more living in the world is, is way more than a Friday night fix. Um, so my, my question has to do with um, and, and this is something that you've been so helpful with us, um, both you and Tracy, in, in the things that you've been teaching, is if you were to, a new believer was to come into our family, and you were to say, during the week, here's two or three things, specific things that you could do, practical things that you could do, so that your faith could expand beyond a two-hour fix, a two-hour, you know, expectation. Because I know that we're all, I, and then I was drawn to this um, passage of scripture, and then I'll, I'll turn it over. For this reason, since the day we have heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit during the week, not just Sunday morning, in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. That's Corinthians 1, 9 and 10. So Josh, just one, two, three things specifically that I can do um, or a new believer could do to kind of flash out my faith during the week. Yeah, that's a great question. A couple things that if someone someone just came in and said, what what could I do that would help me uh, broaden my, uh, my, you know, these moments of encounter with Jesus? Um, and the, the, the typical um, evangelical response has been church attend, like to, to, um, uh, to, to spiritual growth has been read your Bible, attend church, and help to stack the chairs when they need help. You know, that's kind of like to get yourself get yourself involved in some kind of service in the church. And those are good. I'm not saying those aren't good, but I'm saying those are those keep you in that two hour fix once a week. And um, reading scripture is good, and that would be one of the things I would encourage someone to do. But I would also encourage them to read scripture intentionally, not haphazardly. And so if someone came in, I would probably assign them, read one psalm a day and read one chapter in the Gospels a day and start there. Make it simple. Um, and, uh, and when you do that, um, spend a few moments inviting the Holy Spirit to lead and guide your thoughts. Um, and so, you know, one part scripture reading, and then, you know, start with a scripture reading, and then sit in silence, and sit in silence before the Father, put anything down, put music down, put, the, put a book down, put everything down, and just sit in silence before God for five minutes. Let's just start with five minutes, right? Because most of us, 30 seconds is hard, and uh, for five minutes, and that in, in the first 30 seconds, when your thoughts go... We just bring them back to that moment. And I would probably say, here's a couple short phrases that you can, sit, you can consider, or take a short phrase from the psalm. Um, you know, like uh, this morning, my psalm, I was reading in Psalm 129. And so I would take a short phrase and turn it into a prayer. Um, I would say Amos Psalm 129, 4, the Lord is righteous. I'll just take that phrase. Let's just take one little phrase and turn that into a prayer. God, you're righteous. And I'm just going to let myself focus on that phrase. And let that be, it doesn't have to be any more than just one little phrase in there. Something that stands out to you. Um, or many times I've been persecuted from my youth 
and yet they haven't prevailed against me. Oh God, you've been with me in the midst of difficult times. You know, I just change it, just, just make it into a little prayer. So take a Psalms or the Gospels, take a phrase that stands out to you, turn that into a prayer in silence before the Lord for five minutes. Um, and then I would also encourage you to find someone that you can talk to about it, that you can bounce ideas off of. I think those, those three things are so important is taking some time in the scriptures, taking some time to sit before the Father, and then having a relationship with someone else that you can actually talk to about that. And, um, you know, then, then we can start from there. We can start broadening things from there. Um, you know, I'm not going to start you off by saying, well, fast this for this week. I, I'm going to eventually get you there that I think fasting is one of the lost arts of the church today. When I mean, we live in a culture where, why would you fast? You can have everything. Um, but well, I will get you there. But let's just, start, let's just start simple. Let's start with the one, one chapter in the Psalms, one chapter in the Gospels per day, and pray, pray, find a prayer from there, pray that, consider the life of Jesus, put, a, put all distractions down for five minutes. And then maybe in two weeks I'll come back and I'll say, well, how did that go? And you may say, it went terribly. And I'll say, oh, well, let's talk about that. And, um, and you may say, it went well. Okay, well, let's increase your five minutes to 10 minutes. Let's see if you can do that. And um, you know, thereby kind of leading you by degrees to a mo moments of encounter and a lifestyle of encounter. Uh, but you know, it, it's, the thing is, I remember when I first tried to learn to pray, it was like I lasted 30 seconds and I just picked up a book and started reading. It was, this is, it's so difficult and you, th and you feel like a failure in the midst of it. And, um, you know, when you feel like a failure, then all of a sudden you've got shame and you're going, I can't do this. And I so, said, well, let's come alongside you and help you understand. This is simple. Let's start by baby steps. Baby steps are fine. And, and some of us get this idea that, okay, well now, and maybe this is just me, now I'm going to this probably is just me. I'm going to conquer prayer. <laughs> you, know, pray, you don't conquer prayer. Prayer conquers you. And, and so that's a good phrase. <laughs> wow, I like that one. <laughs> yeah, tweet that one out. <laughs> um, and so, so it's okay to start in baby steps. That's perfectly fine. And don't overestimate your maturity. Right, just estimate it, or underestimate it, but estimate it. Don't think, well, okay, I should be able to be holding my attention before the Father for a half an hour right now, or an hour, or two hours, or three hours, because we read these great stories of men and women of great faith and go, well, I should be able to do that. Well, no, there's degrees of increase in your life, and so we'll start with baby steps, and that's okay. And we should be progressing, like a baby steps don't you know, a baby, if a baby keeps walking like a baby and they're 30, that's a problem. And so there should be a progression in maturity, but it's okay to take small steps forward. Thank you, Josh. Next yeah, that's a question. Great question. And those of you online, is there any questions online yeah, yeah. on, on uh, Facebook or YouTube? I've got it open so I can take questions online as well. Other questions. So, other questions. Yeah, Scott. A lot of people, uh, I would say, have trouble encountering Jesus when they get hung up on past hurt, and they just sure. sort of can't get past that. But then there's the person that, let's say they're in their early 20s, go on a mission trip and sort of experience God, have this great encounter, 20 or 30 years pass, and nothing has lived up to that. And, and they're just wandering. So what, what would you say to a person like that? Um, yeah, that's a, and that's a great question, because that, that is the experience of so many of us. Um, you know, I've heard that kind of story so many times. Um, and, and in fact, having, ha, like I, I, Aaron and I uh, interned, we went to a school of ministry for four years. And, you know, going to a place like YWAM and having that kind of experience or, you know, going off to, even, go, even the camp last weekend, going to the camp and having a kind of, some kind of phenomenal experience. And, um, you know, there's, there's the, something happens on a missions trip 
in a youth camp, in a ministry school, whatever, where this kind of this bubble of expectation is created. And you can forge relationships in a weekend that would seem to take years to forge any other time. And so there's almost like this special grace that encapsulates the period, um, and which is great, but it also becomes problematic because when I come back, who am I and how do I live my life? And I, I want, I've seen so many people come back from YWAM or come back from ministry school or come back from a youth camp, whatever, and have this great high and then come back. And actually, Tracy and I were talking about this this week, too. Actually, that's funny. We were. Um, and we were talking about specifically with the youth when they come back. Like, what happens because... Now, all of a sudden, I have to be myself in the midst of the same people. And so, how do I now live what's happened to me, but respond to people that don't know what's happened to me? And that's a, that's a hard thing. Like, no one's going to pretend that that's an easy thing. How do I be this person when all these people are not different like I am? And, and so something that needs to happen, just, just before we get to the 20 years, something that needs to happen in the moment is I need to reorient. I have to have people around me. This is what we've been talking about group identity so much. I need to have people around me, whether it's um, two friends that are over here that I can think to myself when I'm, the, when I'm in the midst of all these other friends that still see me as the other person I was, I need to have someone in my life I can think about that says, how would they respond in this situation? Who, who are they to me and how am I to them? And if I don't have that, it's going to be so easy just to go back into the same pattern and the same rhythm. Because these people, there's, there's something that, um, some of you guys know who John Paul Jackson is, that, uh, one of the people that Aaron and I studied under. He used to talk about the law of attraction. Um, or the, no, so the law of attraction, the law of observation. I don't know if you've ever heard of this where when um, quantum physicists were doing studies on quantum particles and they'd, they'd kind of developed the kind of microscope that could see things on a quantum level and then one of the, one of the scientists would look through the, teles- or the microscope and look at the quantum particle and they'd say, oh, I can see the molecular spin of that quantum particle is spinning this way. And then the other scientists would come up. I'm simplifying a, a crazy experiment, but this is basically what happened, right? Just you can look it up yourself. The other one would come and they looked through the microscope and they'd say, no, it's not spinning this way. It's spinning this way. And then another one would come up and he'd look and he'd say, no, it's not spinning this way or this way. It's spinning this way. And what they came to realize is the way they expected to observe the molecular spin was what they saw in the molecular spin. So the law of observation goes something like this. The way I observe you, you become that way. The way you observe me, I become that way. And think of it this way, okay? So every one of you has family, right? Love it or not so love it. (laughs) And when you have been away for a while, say you go off to college, right? You have all these experiences. Or, or you go off to youth camp, right? Whatever. You know, you go off and have, you go off and grow. And things about you begin to change. When you come back, some of you have family that treats you, oh, you're just like this. You're just like this. And some of you have found yourself falling back into those, own, those old patterns. This is just this kind of person, right? You may, maybe you went through counseling and therapy and you're no longer an angry person, but then you come back to your family and they remember you as an angry person and so they think of you as an angry person and they say the kind of things that make you angry. <laughs> you, know, you go back into the old patterns. The way the people around you observe you, you tend to adapt your behavior to the way those people observe you. Meaning that I, when I've had significant encounters, I have to get around people that help me steward and walk that out. And that's one of the reasons why it tends to fizzle out is because I find myself back in the same place rather than getting connected with people that can help me. And and sometimes getting, today of course, the advent of the the, um, world takeover organization called Zoom, um, (laughs) we actually can facilitate some of those longer distance relationships where, you know, maybe I had some of those youth that went to youth camp now. They can actually, through video chat and things like that, reconnect with people. That would be a very helpful thing to do. 
And so what, what tends to happen with a person who it's never quite been the same is I got out of it. I didn't find a consistent group of people. Um, I'm thinking about specific friends I know that really wrestled with coming back from YWAM and having these intense mission trips and, and really wrestled with nobody understands what I went through. And um, because of that, I lose hope. And because I was existing on the hope of other people over here, I never found people that could help build up that hope. And because I lost hope, I lost sight of who I was becoming. And because I lost sight of who I was becoming, I failed to start practicing the things I was practicing. And then and there's this slow decline. You know, I, it, it, in a way, it's kind of like what I laid out a couple of weeks ago when we were talking about, um, I can't remember, some, it was in the Psalms. One th- it might have, no, it wasn't 139. It was when, when Israel lost sight of the beauty of God and started this slow decline. And so when someone who, I've, I've had that experience, I've lost sight of it, it's never quite happened that way again, the first thing I would say to them is this, spend about a week just meditating on that experience. Just meditate on it. Just dwell on it. Recapture it because, and I've said this before to you guys many times, moments with God are eternal. They don't go away. We move on, but he doesn't because he doesn't change, right? And so go back to that moment and dwell on it because for the, as long as you're alive, there'll still be life in that moment. And so go back to that moment, meditate on it and dwell on it and ask God to recapture it. Teach me from it. One of the things I've noticed about some of the great teachers in Christian history, as it pertains to the spiritual life, is that what they do is they have a significant moment with the Lord, and they mine that thing for all it's worth. And they spend decades teaching the principles that came out of one experience, because they go back to it, and 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 they go back to it. And And the Lord continues to unpack things, because great moments with God communicate grace. It deposits seeds in our life that takes time to play out. So those moments are never gone. So you could be 30 years past a significant moment with the Lord, and God deposited something in you. This is the great reordering for mountaintops. God deposited something in you, and you may have pushed pause on that button, but God didn't. And he's just waiting. He's chomping at the bit for play to get hit again. And so go back to it and meditate on it, and begin to practice the things that welcome the presence of Jesus in your life. And, you know, if it's, if it's, well, I was never involved in missions again, there's always time. You know, for, with Scott's specific question, I, you know, I had this great prophetic word, I prophesied over someone, but then I never had another prophetic word for anybody again. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's get you into a place where you can practice that. Let's, let's talk about um, establishing healthy patterns in your life, and let's get you connected with the kind of people that can help you walk that out. And so again, again, as this, all this stuff takes community, it really does take us working together. Um, but it also takes, like, it's going to take some effort on your part, too. To re, one, to recapture that moment where something happened to you, and to meditate on that, and to think about that, and dwell upon it, and ask God, I don't want to let this go. I want whatever you had for me in this moment, even if it was 30 years ago, I don't want it to go to waste. Father, teach me. And just use that simple prayer. Spend a week meditating on it. Watch where God goes with that. And then um, try and get around some people that would be helpful in helping you cultivate whatever it happened to be. Is that helpful, Scott? Yeah. That's so good. It's such a good reminder, though, Josh, when we think we've missed something that we actually haven't. We can right. go back to that place. So right. for, for time, I'm just looking. We are, we are done. <laughs> 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 we had to bring all the kids up and pray for them. And I know, it was good. good. It was yeah. good. Um, prayed for my kids. I, so. I can tell there's actually, I sense that there's questions brewing. And a question came in online, and I know there was some other people with questions too. So I just want to encourage you to send those in yeah. uh, to the church office, because then we're going to get a chance to go over them and see where we can continue to dig into the sure. questions that are coming in. Uh, there's different forms that we can take to actually answer some of those things. So um, the email you can find at our website, summersidecommunity.church, or if you've got a really good memory, it's sccoffice at sccpei. 
www.thepeopleshow.com and uh, send your questions there. We love to review them. You can just and message on Facebook too, right? Yeah, you can, yeah. yeah, if that's easier, you can just yeah. message on Facebook. Just go through our messenger on Facebook too. That's great. Um, and I just, I think, you know, as you're talking, Josh, and the different things you're covering, like just that reminder uh, how important it is to have a small group and community around us. Like mm -hmm. it just reinforces so much that we, we need to do this life together. And well, so just just one yeah. thing, just envision this in response okay. to what you said with Scott's question, right? Sure. Envision this. Yeah. I come back from a mission strip, right? And the first thing that happens on the next Wednesday is I get together with my community group. And right. my community group says, Well what happened? Right? And so you get to tell the story and relive the experience again. Right? And then they get to pray for you. Yeah. And then they get to hold you accountable to that because they know the thing that happened, right? Yes. And then if you have a good leader, the leader can say, oh, well, can you teach about this thing next week or this week or whatever, right? And you can see how what happened can be stewarded in the life of communities yes. so simply, right? It doesn't, it's not rocket, this stuff is not rocket science, <laughs> right? It really isn't, okay? It's, yeah. We it, often make it more complicated. We make it way more complicated than it is. <laughs> yeah. But I get an opportunity to share it. I get an opportunity to relive it. I get an opportunity to have it solidified by the people around me that I do life with. And then all, all of a sudden, the next thing I know is I'm teaching them about it or talking with them about it. Exactly. And it advances by degrees. Absolutely. And I think yeah. even you guys have heard this now. So part of me thinks, be persistent, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and be persistent and find those people you can share with and that you can walk with that you know would be encouraging to you. And uh, I know sometimes we struggle if we don't get the response that we think we should have. Um, but sometimes it means, well, who are the right people? God, show me who it is that you'd have me yeah. go to. When you share, I was, I was, I was talking with a friend this week um, and we were going through lots of that friend's life story. Mm -hmm. And pretty much every major beat of his story when he was sharing it with me, he started crying. Oh, wow. And it was, I mean, it was a beautiful thing, right? And I was, I was looking at this going, there's still so much life here, mm -hmm. right? How many of you ever shared a story that can be 30, 40 years in the past, but it gets, it gets you still, right? Because it, it hasn't ended. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. It's still present, these beautiful moments with God. And we get the benefit and the privilege of walking them out together. Yeah, that's so good. And so, yeah, with that, I just want to just encourage you, too, if God is stirring stuff, I'm not in a group, I'm not in community, I want to be in community, we're going to have those opportunities uh, coming soon. And so uh, I just want to encourage you, don't shy away from, oh, I don't know if I feel very comfortable. Or maybe you've been hurt before, like, in a small group, too, like you've experienced something that you're like, oh, I'm not so comfortable. Um, and I just want to encourage you, we're, we're, we're hurt in a community, but we're also, we are healed in yeah, community. Yeah, what a great opportunity for It's a, a great a opportunity story. for redemption. It's a great opportunity yeah. for God to redeem what was before to something beautiful. And so just want to encourage you, if some of you are just like, oh, I don't want to touch that again, let the Holy Spirit soften that place in you. Let him touch yeah. that place. Let him meet you there in that place and show you that he will help guide you and be part of this journey going forward. It's, not, it's never easy with people. I mean, we all know that we, <laughs> we're all people who make mistakes. We have weaknesses. We hurt yes. one another. We do. That is the reality. Um, but in community, we learn how to say, I'm sorry. We learn how to say, I forgive you. Uh, and that's the biggest thing because honestly, we, Josh, you've talked about this, I think a week or two ago. Um, like, we don't know how to love well. Mm -hmm. God is love. We learn from him, and uh, we really aren't good at it. And so that's why that's right. we need to seek forgiveness, and we need to seek uh, to say, I'm sorry. We need to seek to have short accounts with one another so that we can walk in healthy community. And, um, you know, sometimes we think church should be this perfect place. But, guys, you are the church, <laughs> and we're not perfect. Got news Only for he you. is. <laughs> <laughs> not perfect. <laughs> Only he is. And so the more that we can take our eyes off ourselves and off each other and put them on him, that is going to help us in this journey of being a healthy community and a healthy place for people to experience Jesus and experience healing and experiencing wholeness. And experiencing an encounter with him is what helps yeah. us get there. And that's a daily, it's a daily choice. So thank that's you, right. Josh, for leading awesome. us in that. Yeah, will you pray over us before yeah, we yeah, go? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Father, I just thank you for... Summerside Community Church, and I thank you for people that are are from, um, you know, traveling from other provinces that are uh, just, you know, just happened here today, and I thank you for people that have been here for 
a week, a month, a year, 10 years, or 20 years, Lord. I just thank you that you draw and you woo. And our, our, our responsibility in the, speech, in the spiritual life is just to respond. That's all. That's our responsibility is to respond to you, but you do everything else. And so, Father, I just thank you for that. I thank you that we are a people of encounter, that we're becoming a people of encounter, and that we care passionately about you being present in our life. And so we just ask for grace to rest upon each person, especially during this week, Lord, that, that you'd begin teaching us. You'd help us revisit those old moments of encounter that we forgot about or we thought passed away or whatever it happened to be, Lord, that you'd help us revisit those moments and see those moments and see you in those moments and see us in light of those moments. Uh, and that, Father, that you would draw us by degrees into intimacy with you, that we'd know you even more and more and more and more, and our life would be ever more a reflection of your life. So just bless each person here to engage with your life and to be caught up with your life and to catch a glimpse of how beautiful you are. So bless this time this morning, Father. Bless the time that sharing out in the cafe, Lord, that, that you'd be present and you would be in our midst. Father, we, just, we, we, and we continually invite you into the chambers of our heart to make your home there. Help us to make space for you. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank okay. you. Yes. And so there is coffee on. And so I just want to encourage you just to have this opportunity to be together, chat, and enjoy. And we'll see you next week.